Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I'm going to do is teach you guys how to make a command line tool in Node, okay, um, which is fun. And it's just a combination of a couple different things. So what we're going to do is I have this folder here. I'm going to make a new folder for a new project. So new folder and we're going to call it uh, test CLI. And I'm going to CD into that folder. CD. Test CLI. <clears throat> Clear the terminal. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch an index.js file. That's where we'll be doing all our coding. And then I am going to do an npm init. npm init y. So that way we can we have our package.json. So now when I look in this folder, I should have two files my index.js, package.json. I don't need to bring in any kind of libraries for this um, because technically we're just going to be using the native node libraries. Okay, so you want to create a command line tool. Okay, first thing we need to just learn the library. And we'll give you the basics because I wouldn't say I'm an expert in this particular library. But basically the way you want to do is bring in child process. So we'll do const cp for child process equals require child process. Let me sure you this is underscore or uh, let's see here. It, it is underscore. Okay. <clears throat> and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destructure the functions instead. So there's really four functions that you want out of this particular library. There's other functions that I'm not going to get into, like fork and exec file. But the main ones are spawn, spawn sync, exec. <coughs> exec sync okay and basically what these four functions do is they allow you to run commands just in a slightly different way so first let's talk about spawn so what spawn does okay spawn runs a command without creating a shell Okay, and it's asynchronous, which means whatever your next command is, it'll go on to it before that command com 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 completes itself, which you want to keep in mind because what if you want to create a folder and then change into that folder? If you use the asynchronous commands, it's going to make it's going to start making the folder, but try to get into the folder before you're done actually making the folder. So you got to think sort of like how whether you want to use the synchronous versions of ones, which it'll wait for one command to finish before it goes on to the next one versus the asynchronous versions of these. <coughs> okay, so let's just to show you the test. Okay, const uh, child, you can call it whatever you want. And we're gonna spawn a process. And then first you put in the command. So I'm just gonna do pwd. Okay, and leave it at that. And what that does, it creates a child process. And the child process is also an event emitter, so it does emit events that you can call. So I can do something like this. Um, this child, this child dot standard out dot on. So that means the standard out is just output. So basically, it creates two streams: standard out and standard in. Uh, standard out, standard in, and standard error, and those so out the output from any just normal terminal output would be streamed into standard out and any um, <coughs> output from an error would come in standard error and it's triggered by an event when data gets passed into it so that's the event because again on is just sort of node for event emitters in node it always has this on function to trigger a function so okay and then what happens the data gets passed into the, the callback, the actual whatever. So in that case, we can just console log the data <clears throat> every time new data gets passed into the stream. OK, which should just be the working directory. So if I do this, I will do like a node index.js just to see that it works. OK. <clears throat> 
So this means I'm getting back a buffer. So what I'm getting back is a buffer. Now, when you have a buffer, so data is a buffer, or else I wouldn't be getting that console log like this. So the way you fix that is you just use the two string function which exists on buffers. And that'll turn it to a string that we can read. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And there you go, see there's my, my print working directory. My PWD command was successful. <clears throat> And what I'm going to do is just put in a word here, just saying, okay, async spawn, so you can see what generated this particular output. Okay, async spawn, uh, data to string. Cool. Now then there's also spawn sync. It's the same thing, except it's synchronous. So runs a command without creating a shell. Okay, except this one is synchronous. Cool. So we can do something like const child or well, child two equals spawn sync. And we'll pass in, this time we'll pass in the command echo. And now we want to echo something, so we want to pass in some arguments. So what you do is a second argument, you pass in an array with any additional arguments you want to pass in. So I'm just going to pass in the string hello world. So it'd be like, it's the equivalent of me doing this. Echo hello world. And so he just prints out hello world. So that's what that should do. The only difference is that since this is synchronous, it won't keep moving on. So it'll wait till this completes before it does anything else. And in this case, you don't have an event emitter. You just have a property called child uh, to oh, let me console log. So in this case, I want to just console log the value because it just gives you back the buffer at the end. You don't get anything back till it's done. So console.log um, child to dot standard out dot to string because again it's still going to give you a buffer object so you got to turn that into a string okay and then let me put here um sync spawn so we know who pro who created what save hello world okay see um oh wait no that's the same command node index.js okay so you see how the first one is asynchronous because see even though this command is first in line in our application since it's asynchronous it just kept moving on so the sync the hello sync spawn hello world ended up running first or exit finishing first and then this got finished so even though so again, you can see sort of the difference between the asynchronous behavior versus synchronous behavior. Because if they were both synchronous, this would have showed up first because technically this is first right here. Cool. Now let's move on to exec. There's another way to run a command, runs a command, but creates a new shell. Okay. And this one I haven't used as much, but let's just try it out. Const child three equals exec. And then this takes the command. And this one, you can actually put all the arguments of the command inside there. So this time I can do hello world two. So I can just do that. And then it should take a callback. So let's see if I can remember what the callback is. Yeah, so it's error. The output, let's see here, exact exception, no, standard out, standard error. Yeah, okay, so. The out, standard out, standard error. Okay, these are just two different types of error inputs. I'm not going to really worry about those. 
they just capture different types of errors. All I really want to do is capture the output. So console.log standard out. I think it's already buffer. Like it's already been. I don't think you have a buffer this time. So I don't think I have to do the two string. We'll find out in a moment. So essentially what happens is that this callback runs after this command is done. Um, and then that's where you would put it for exec. So let's see here. Let's hit save. And then again, this exec is asynchronous. So let's try to do a node index again and see it, it works. Okay. But again, we see that this one finishes first because that's synchronous. This one finished second because it was the first asynchronous one. And then this one ran and now we'll do exec sync. So exec sync is a synchronous version of exec. Runs a command and creates a new shell, but this one is synchronous. Const child four equals exec sync. And this time we'll say um, echo hello world three. Then we pass in the callback. Make sure that's here. Exec sync command string options undefined. Okay, so for this one, I think it returns the object with this with the standard out. So I think once again, just like before, it's going to be inside child four. So child four dot. Standard. Well, let's just console log what we get back. Save. Okay, that's going to be the other ace. So it is a buffer. So let's see here dot to string. There we go. Okay, so yeah, so basically whatever the output is from the command just ends up being stored as a buffer in the return value. So this just returns the buffer of the output. Okay, but let's take a look at the order. So first we had sync spawn hello world. Okay, so if the synchronous spawn goes first, then the synchronous exec happens and the two asynchronous ones ended up getting executed third and fourth. So again, just to kind of the difference between asynchronous behavior, which happens out of order versus synchronous, which happens in order. Um, one has to wait for the synchronous always waits for the, the, the prior, the prior synchronous command to execute while asynchronous does not. Um, yeah. So those are the four ways you can run commands. So you can, we can, we ran commands. Great. So that's, that's the actual like script. Okay. And you can just run whatever commands you like from there. So now we want to make this a bash script. So there's a couple other things we need to do. Um, okay, so let me get rid of this here. Let me get back to the folder thing. Now another thing we need to do, let me just grab this little characters over here. It's right here at the top. You need to have this at the top of your file because what's going to happen is that your command is going to run this command in bash and bash needs to know how to handle. Um, let's see, it's right here, index.js needs to know how to handle this. So when you put this at the top, when Bash runs your command, it'll know to use this, to use your node, your local node install to um, run this command line tool. Okay, so you need that there. Just like that, so that. Make sure it's the top of your, of your file. Cool, so now we've created our command line script. Now the next step is to go to package.json. Now if we go to package.json, we just need to add a new property called bin. In bin, we pass in an object with our commands and what files they trigger. Let me just put a comma here so it doesn't give me that look anymore. So we're just gonna call this test command. We have this JSON, so all this has gotta get quotation marks.
test. Oh, I'll just call it test, test, test. Okay, is the command. And when that command is run, okay, what you're going to do, it's going to run a file in the same folder of index.js. Okay, save. So if I want to test this out, what I can do is I have to link this particular file. So in this folder with the package.json, I type in npm link. It's going to see this bin and create a command in our system that runs this combination. So it's going to run this file when I run this command. Now, oh, you got to do that with root privileges. So you got to do sudo npm link. It doesn't let you do it. Or at least on my machine, it doesn't let me do it otherwise. you're changing system settings cool now I've done that so now if I type in test 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 it runs the command cool now let me just no, now let me un now if I wanted to undo it because I'm done testing it I would just do npm sudo npm unlink, which I'm going to do because I want to fix this up a little bit. Fast. Cool. And then what you would do is at this point you would just publish it to npm. So once you're done with this, you would just type in npm publish. Uh, you just type in npm publish to publish this to npm. And then you can install it globally like you would install any kind of global CLI tool. So I would, so this, in this case it's called test CLI. So it would be like npm I dash G test CLI. Okay, but one last thing I wanted to talk about um, how you take arguments. So, so for example, I want to set it up where I can type in like test, 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 cheese, and it'll console log that. Okay, so how do I do that? Any arguments that are passed into your script are going to show up in this object process. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called array destruction because you get a disarray you always want to kind of skip the first two arguments or actually I'll just console log the object so you can see it process dot arg b okay all your arguments will pass and be passed into this array the first two elements are always like where your node is and where the file that's being run is so unless you need those, you don't need them. So that's why generally what you see people do is they'll do something like this, like const array destructuring, and they do comma, comma. So you skip the first two elements, and then we'll just say word. Okay, the third thing is going to be that first argument we pass in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one. Change these to back ticks so we can interpolate. make it now instead of saying hello world it's going to say hello whatever the argument we passed in is word and we destructure that from our arguments over here which I need to finish process dot arc the so that destructures the arguments from that so as I hit save cool so now let me relink this so now that I fixed the name and package.json earlier so it's test 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 so if I do sudo npm link it does the thing and then I do test 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 cheese see it says hello cheese because it's taking that argument we destructure that argument here and I can take as many arguments as I want I just put them in whatever whatever order and then I use them throughout my script to however I'd like and that's pretty much the basics of creating a command line tool in uh, node so you would use the child process library to actually run the commands in your command line um, you can use you use this process the object to pull in any arguments in the package.json you set up the bin property so that way it sets up an actual system command tool command
command. If you want to test it out locally, you use the npm link command. So I will unlink sudo npm unlink. And then you just publish it to npm when you're done. And then you can install it globally. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com, uh, alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.